Based on the developer's prior game and the minimal footage for Terminator Resistance, I was still hopeful but not confident that this game was going to be good. The developer made a rail shooter using the Rambo license with mixed results. But once I got my hands on Terminator Resistance, I was not only impressed by how much fun the game was, but this actually felt like a labor of love from people who actually loved the first two films. From the visuals to the atmosphere, gun sounds, and even the story, this all felt like a genuine Terminator experience. While the game did have some flaws, overall I found the game to be pretty great and very fun, which is why I was surprised by the critical reception for this title. The game's media and some YouTubers lambasted the game, saying it was a bad title giving it scores like 5 out of 10 or 1 out of 5. I found the really low review scores kind of odd, since the gameplay, while familiar, it was an enjoyable first person shooting experience. Also Terminator Resistance was a stable game. I had a stable frame rate with no crashes on the PC. PS4 or the PS5. This was a solid first person shooter even if you were just a passing Terminator fan. The low scores made no sense to me and there was definitely a large contrast between the players and the critics. Just look at the Steam review scores for this title, they are generally really good. I could understand critics giving this title an 8 or a 7, but the numbers lower than this felt like they honestly hadn't even played this game. Terminator Resistance is the best piece of Terminator entertainment since the second film and I loved it. Terminator Resistance is a first-person shooter that perfectly respects the first two films, along with creating a satisfying original story. The general action is very enjoyable with engaging combat. The visuals may look a bit rough in spots, and honestly I think it enhances the old aesthetics that we saw from the films. While this may not have been intentional in some areas, it helps the experience regardless. Another thing to note that on the PS5 it looks considerably better as well. The new story provides plenty of fan service without it being the only aspect about the narrative. There's some fun creative touches in the story that allows for this new tale to fit in nicely with the first two films. This is not a situation where the world of Terminator is deconstructed or subverted for the sake of something new, resulting in a disrespectful game, but rather Terminator Resistance is a great example of the type of sequel that fans would want from the series and I love this game. <laughs> The bulk of the gameplay is centered on the shooting. The sound effects from your weapons are great with the modern weapons sounding like they should and having some power behind them. The best of the bunch comes from the energy weapons that feel ripped right from the films. The impact of your shots is pretty good as well with the robots often showing damage as you shoot them. In addition, there's a good amount of explosions and sparks whenever you destroy one. You have a pretty good variety in your arsenal. When it comes to your guns, there's a nice mix of normal human weapons like SMGs, machine guns, and shotguns along with energy weapons. There's plenty of explosives from grenades and rocket launchers to many throwable bombs. You have access to some unique weapons and consumables that can aid you as well. For example, there is a termination knife that can be used to stealth kill terminators, or different stims to provide you with limited buffs like slowing down time. There's enough weapons and items to allow you to adopt your own personalized playstyle. Do not expect a considerable amount of depth in this area, but there is enough to where you can have a preference on stealth. Using long-range weapons weapons with a mixture of explosives or solely focusing on automatic weapons and traps. The arsenal helps to keep things interesting and varied for the entire campaign, and even allowing for some replay value. What also aids this are the variety of enemies that you will encounter. The Terminators do steal the show as intimidating foes, but there's plenty of other enemies like spider-like crawlers, suicide rushers, heavies, and flying foes.
the combat is a huge area of the game, the exploration is a large focus as well. The game offers plenty of optional rooms with nooks and crannies to grab stashed weapons, ammo, and supplies. This is best seen in some of the more open levels. It is here where you can really take your time and take in the environments. And this also shows off the atmosphere and really lets the bleak future set in. These areas will see you discovering side missions. Side missions can range from finding a particular item requested by an ally, or destroying an outpost. They are generally pretty fun, providing a healthy amount of rewards and are worth checking out. To open up more paths, you have lockpicking and hacking minigames. The lockpicking operates just like the system seen in Fallout 3, and the hacking has you dodging some objects to get to the right side of the screen. Both are fun little distractions that never hurt the flow of the action. Terminator Resistance features an inventory system, so you'll need to consider what weapons to bring with you and what to leave behind. Along with this, the energy weapons can be upgraded with chips that you find in destroyed enemies and stashes. It is here you can add some personalization to your energy weapons, like improving a few stats like damage, magazine size, and a few more. You can opt to focus on a few different stats or just focus on one of them like solely improving your damage output. There's even shops that you can visit at bases to sell excess weapons and supplies for other items. Terminator Resistance features an RPG-like progression system. As you defeat enemies and complete missions, you will earn experience, and each time you level up, you will earn a skill point. You can put your skill points into one of three trees. Combat relates to your stealth, firearm proficiency, and explosives. Science covers lockpicking, hacking, and crafting. And lastly, survival improves how much damage you can take, how much experience you can earn, and how much you can carry. Terminator Resistance succeeds at blending more open and non-linear levels with linear bombastic action. One thing that really impressed me with this game was how open some of the levels were. These levels are like many open worlds, with lots of exploration and plenty to find, along with side missions to discover. On the flip side, the more linear levels allows the game to present a higher sense of urgency. Both of these level types complement each other well. Terminator Resistance also has a great hook. The first level is fairly linear while providing you with some opportunities for exploration. The second level is one of the open areas, and it is here where I really fell in love with the game. The gameplay mechanics, progression system, and exploration are all simple and effectively provided to the player, while allowing for a lot of enjoyable gameplay. On top of this, the story really sucks you in as you are thrown into the future war fight and are helped by this mysterious stranger. This initial mystery is set up well here and provides an interesting hook to the narrative. While not every game needs to pull you in right away, and a slow build-up can be an effective way to pull this off as well, I like how Terminator Resistance provides the player with a bit of what they would expect from a game of this type, along with surprising them through its narrative and more open levels. On August 29th, 1997, Skynet, a computer system built to protect us, became self-aware. It viewed humanity as a threat to its existence and decided to act. Judgment Day, as we eventually called it, marked the beginning of the war against the machines. Skynet attacks happened almost daily, but the attack that happened on that day was like nothing we'd seen before. Terminator Resistance succeeds at creating an original story that fits in nicely with the first two films, along with providing plenty of enjoyable fan service. There are many elements about the narrative that stood out to me. First, I really enjoyed the use of the mysterious stranger that helps you out throughout the campaign. You do not know his identity, and at first you think he might be a rogue Resistance member, or someone like that, but he does have a vested interest in you and pops up throughout the entire campaign. This starts right in the first mission, so like I mentioned before, it contributes to hooking the player into the narrative as you start asking questions. There are some clues so that you can guess who this is before the big reveal, but even if you figure out the twist, I like how he is incorporated for the entire story. This also adds a bit of fun replay value if you decide to play the game again and see it through a different perspective since you know who this guy is. The writers are good at holding back and building up certain elements to give them weight. For example, the player assumes the role of a resistance member, whose division was 
wiped out and you are now searching for surviving members. For the first few levels, you do not meet any of the resistance members. You are mainly with a ragtag group of survivors. This allows the bleak nature to really set in as you start to doubt if this resistance even exists anymore. And this is seen through much of the dialogue as many are lacking in hope. This effectively works really well to sell the dark future, since the writers held back meeting the resistance members for the first few missions. This same style is also seen again with the use of the Terminators. You do not actually fight the Terminators until the end of level 3. Up to this point, you fight other robots and can destroy them in a normal way, just by shooting them. But once you encounter a Terminator, your human weapons will not work against it. The Terminators are significantly harder to defeat, deal more damage, and you need to get creative. This first encounter with the Terminator forces the player to fight differently than before, meaning you can hurt them with explosives if you have them, hack turrets to use their weapons against them, or sneak past them. This is all up to the player, but it cements that these machines are to be feared and are not a pushover. The developers treat the Terminators with respect, and this is reflected in the story and gameplay. Terminator Resistance succeeds in selling the future war that we only got a glimpse at in the first two films. You get to experience many small victories, along with several setbacks in the war with the machines. You feel the weight of the fight throughout the entire campaign, and how the final attack has everything riding on it. In between missions, you can talk to people back at the bases, and this helps to humanize the Resistance members along with grounding the side characters. There's even some choices in how you talk to people, and this can result in some different outcomes for the story. The choice system allows for replay value, as you see how a conversation could go another way or result in a new outcome. Overall, I really enjoyed the story, and just like the action, this feels like a story written by someone who understands and loves the source material. Jacob Rivers, marked for termination. Terminator Resistance does have some flaws that I want to make note of. The AI in this game can be pretty dumb. In some cases, they will be very delayed to react to you, along with some getting stuck in the environment. One thing I wished was changed is how there is a light aiming acceleration on the console versions. It isn't horrible to the point of really hindering the shooting, and it can be managed by changing some of the sensitivity settings. But I wish that this was not even in the game. There is a fight in the last quarter of the game where you square off against an infiltrator model, and this fight is really dragged out and very boring to be in. And lastly, I think there was a bit of a missed opportunity to not lean a bit more into the first Terminator and include some horror-like elements. I think it might have been exciting to have a boss fight where you need to defeat a Terminator, and you need to use whatever you can in the environment to either defeat it or sneak past it. The Terminators are intimidating foes and can lend themselves well to some situations like this. Now let's discuss the DLCs. The Infiltrator mode acts as a prequel of sorts to the main story. You play as a Terminator who is tasked with killing a resistance leader. You need to collect intel to find his location. What I did like about this mode is how it offers a lot of exploration. The map is pretty big and there's plenty to see and find. As the Terminator, you have a few new options like the cool red detective vision. You can also grab and throw humans along with breaching doors. There's a lot of choice in how you tackle the map and where you want to go. It is a fun diversion that you will probably only play a few times. I think it could have benefited from having some save points as it is a one-shot type of thing, with no option to return back to it. Granted it only lasts for an hour or two, but the option to save would have been nice. Also, it feels like a nice base for a fun roguelike game if it had some progression along with some randomization. I think the developers could have taken this additional mode a bit further, but as it stands, it's a pretty fun and decent distraction. Overall, the Annihilation Line expansion is a great piece of DLC, and while it mostly offers more of the same gameplay from the base game, the new story is solid and very fun. In in this one, you work with a small squad, including Kyle Reese, as you try to find out what happened to a group of people. Each member of the squad receives some characterization, and I really enjoyed the flashback moments at the start that has Rivers interacting with his father as a child. The story is integrated well into the main game, along with the first two films, and has a great ending. Just like in the main game, the missions are a nice mix of more open maps and linear bombastic action. The first open map is the best of the bunch, and is rather large, offering memorable side 
missions and exploration. You will be exploring destroyed cities and bases as you try to stop Skynet. The linear levels do a good job of delivering on the set pieces with memorable fights with the many Terminators or a large mech-like foes. The DLC starts you off with a large amount of skill points and money so you can get right into the action. When the gameplay loop was good in the base game, having more of it here is not a bad thing. My only real complaint is that I would like to see a version of Terminator Resistance that has the base game and the expansion fully integrated with each other into one smooth experience, and not segmented by menus. The expansion lasted about 4 to 5 hours and I loved it as well. Before we move to the conclusion, I want to highlight the awesome soundtrack. These developers use similar themes as the films, while creating new and fresh music for the game. It is appropriately Terminator and even has some great variations on the classic theme. Here are a few tracks from the game. Terminator Resistance is an underrated first-person shooter. While the critics were way off on this one, if you just want to enjoy a fun first-person shooter, you're gonna have a fun time with this. But if you are a Terminator fan, you are going to absolutely find so much here to enjoy. The developers masterfully show what makes the first two films special, along with creating a new story that fits in nicely with them. So there's a nice balance between providing fan service and providing something new and original. The gameplay is great as well, with the levels having a nice balance between linear bond bombastic action, and more open, non-linear levels offering a lot of exploration. The DLCs are generally good, with the main expansion being the best of the bunch. After Terminator Resistance, this developer made me more than confident in their future projects, and I would love if they tackled other iconic action films like Commando, and maybe even getting a second attempt at Rambo. They are working on a Robocop game, and I'm very excited for it. I highly recommend Terminator Resistance. If you are interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you would like to support the channel and get early access to content, please check out my Patreon. All the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.